Hello everybody, hope you can hear that. Let me tell you what's going on here. Let me just switch my alarm off. So that alarm is my condensate pump overflow failure warning. And when they overflow, because the switch has failed or the pump has failed, you can get a lot of water pretty quickly overflowing an area. So I woke up this morning to my alarms chirping. Let me show you how this works. So here's a typical pump. Let's forget about the brand name here in this case because many of the designs are very similar. You can see the power cords here. Generally, I've seen blue wire coming out of here and they're just hanging in the air. They're normally a little bit longer, but the installer who put the equipment in didn't want me to notice these and just clipped them off a little bit short. So I'll remove the cover here. There was one screw here. Make sure you're unplugged. Pumps are really, really simple. You can see two micro switches here, or mini switches. There's one here, and there's one here. You can see that the switch with the blue wires attached to it is this switch in the back. And it's just a little micro switch and what mini switch. It's supposed to turn your furnace, in my case furnace and air conditioner, off so that no more water is created. And this one here is the float switch that is supposed to turn the float on and off. When the water level gets high, pump comes on. Water level gets low, pump goes off. So what's happened here is this float switch has failed. And this is not the first time. And this back switch has a set of normally closed contacts and a set of normally open contacts. There are three contacts. So what I've done is I've taken the set of normally open contacts and connected them to a battery and to an alarm so that when the switch fails, the set of normally open contacts closes. When the water gets too high, the set of normally open contacts close, completing the alarm circuit and creating that chirp you heard at the beginning of this video. When the pump is shipped from the factory, the wires are connected to the common, which is on this switch on the left. The wires are connected to the common, which is the bottom, in this particular configuration, it's the bottom most terminal. If you pull the switch out, you'll see the markings on it, common. And the other wire is connected to the normally closed contact. And then this auxiliary switch is wired in series with your control circuit to your furnace and your air handler. So if the condensate pump is full of water, it doesn't allow the air conditioning or your, or your high efficiency furnace to create any more water until you resolve this problem. Because it wasn't connected to my furnace and I really want immediate warning that I've got a problem. You remove this terminal from the normally closed contact and you connect it to the normally open contact. So when the float rises up, you'll hear that it gets to the top. This actuator arm right here pushes on this contact right here. closes the circuit now because it was normally open when the water gets too high it closes and that turns on my alarm. It's a close-up of my control panel it's really simple I have an on off switch here and then a push the test push the test on off and I draw my power from my security system alarm box I've got double batteries in there. This thing doesn't take much power. And that's a little electronic chirper here. It could be any kind of alarm you want, but use low voltage. That auxiliary contact's not designed for a, to handle a lot of current. Don't tackle this if you don't understand the content of, my, of this video. I'm not gonna post up any schematics or anything like that. Uh, I take no responsibility if you electrocute yourself because you didn't unplug this and you're working on this hot. And again, this is just a low voltage circuit here. This is the high voltage circuit here, the low voltage switch back here. Thanks for watching. How about a thumbs up if you found this interesting or helpful?